Looking out across the empty highway, Tom considered his future. He wouldn't discover the extent of the forces conspiring against him in Walnut Creek until many years later. But he knew one thing. Those cops were going to find the steel man, which meant that sooner or later, they'd trace it back to him. It was only a matter of time. Officer Dexter was chasing leads. Normally, in a bank case, it's the police detectives, not the uniform officers, who help the FBI gather evidence and interview witnesses. But in this case, after the suspect had gotten away from him, Dexter made it his mission to follow up on the best clue. The orange bicycle. Contra Costa County, an 800 square mile region that includes Walnut Creek, had 50 to 60 bank robberies every year. Most were perpetrated by small timers with typical MOs. None had developed anywhere as ingenious a plan as the bicycle bandit, which, of course, made trying to ID him all the more alluring. Dexter told Officer Thompson over coffee that he was going to find the bicycle bank robber. Although he didn't know anything about road or track bikes, the orange 12 speed was special. The crime lab examined it for fingerprints but didn't identify any matches. Dexter walked in from the station to a nearby bike shop. A guy behind the counter said the frame was custom made by a man named Stillman in Redwood City, an hour's drive south. Dexter called the company and spoke to Brent Stillman's wife, who handled the bookkeeping. After digging through her records, she told Dexter that the serial number he had might be for one of two bikes, a blue one sold in California or possibly a 1996 orange one sold at a shop called Higher Gear in Chicago. Dexter called Higher Gear but the guy who answered said they didn't keep records that far back. There was no telling how many times that orange bike had changed hands. Dexter sent Stillman's wife a photo of the bike, along with a security camera shot of the suspect. She agreed to post a notice on the Stillman website and include the Walnut Creek Police Department's phone number. A few days later, Dexter heard that a coach at the high school by the creek had seen something odd that night of the robbery. At 5.10 p.m., the coach was sitting in her car in the school parking lot, talking on the cell phone, when she saw a man rustling through the bushes by the bridge. He appeared to be wearing a wetsuit. As he walked across the dimly lit parking lot, she noticed water squishing out of his sneakers. It was peculiar but not peculiar enough to report until she heard the news a day after the robbery. Meanwhile, 
The FBI was doing its own investigating. Bob Schenke was one of two agents in the Bureau's tiny satellite branch covering Contra Costa County. A matter of fact, 40-something with a trim moustache and thinning hair, Schenke had been with the FBI since 1976. Schenke liked to say that bank robbers are the stupidest people on the face of the earth. Once, he had busted a suspect who would written his demand note on the back of his own deposit slip. Sooner or later, even the most sophisticated criminals trip up. Before the Union Bank theft in Walnut Creek, Schenke had already tied a string of unsolved bank robberies to one suspect, what the FBI calls a repeater. The crimes were committed in suburbs across Schenke's jurisdiction, including Lafayette and Concord. Schenke had gathered security cam images from each and noticed that the suspect had a habit of standing before the tellers with his hands pressed together. Soon after, the FBI nicknamed the unnamed suspect the Choir Boy. Schenke noticed another important pattern. Each of the banks was near a train station. He had a theory that the unidentified man was using public transport to escape. He was just waiting for a new lead to break the case. The orange Stillman was too good to be true. He had to be the choir boy. One month after the robbery, the manager of a bicycle shop in Chicago called the Walnut Creek Police. He'd seen the notice on Stillman's website. In 1996, he'd assembled the orange bike. He knew the original owner. He also knew the guy who'd bought the bike secondhand. It was a cyclist named Tom Justice.